If nice guys finish last, does that include cheaters? The following story has what it takes to prove that nice guys can hide a berserker inside. A wife treated like a queen, add in a loving partner, cheating, regret, and a risky confession. And you might unlock the anti-simp instead. Before we start, switch the like button sleeping pills for caffeine ones. Warning, the following story will be triggering to cheaters. I can't believe I of all people would be writing this, but here I am. For confidentiality reasons, I'm going to speak in generalities and use fake names. For this post, I'll call my husband Winston and refer to myself as Susan. My husband and I are in our 20s and have been married over two years. We met by chance out in public, started talking, exchanged numbers, and the rest, as they say, is history. It was a case of love at first sight. At least it was for me. We dated for six months and then lived together for a year, prior to marrying. At the insistence of my parents, we had a big wedding. They paid for everything except for the bar and our honeymoon, which his parents paid for. My parents love Winston and his parents love me. Our marriage has been wonderful and I wouldn't change a thing. Winston treats me like a queen and I treat him like a king. We just do this naturally to express our love. Now hearing this, you may ask, what's the problem, lady? The problem is, I cheated on Winston with a work colleague two months ago, and I'm now overwhelmed with guilt. Now every time Winston does something kind for me, I just crumble inside. I feel so awful and undeserving. To try to make up for my betrayal, I've been extra attentive to him since returning from the trip. We're naturally so affectionate towards each other, but I'm now going way beyond that. My dad often jokes with us saying we should get a room as we're always engaged in some form of public displayed affection. As I said up front, I'm not going to get into specifics, but I need to go over how things developed with my colleague and hope someone can help me. I was selected to be part of a special assignment team for the company I work for. This program was a key initiative for the company and very important to our shareholders. Working on the project was very gratifying for me, as it was a great challenge. Yet, it was very taxing and extremely stressful. So much so, that one of the women on our team suffered a nervous breakdown. We primarily worked on the project remotely, but did meet as a team three times during the process. Nearing the end of the project, something went wrong on the portion I was working on. This necessitated me going to one of the regional offices for a week to work on resolving the problem. Originally, three of us were set to go, but at the last minute, the woman I mentioned, who had the nervous breakdown, had to back out for obvious reasons. This left me and another colleague, I'll call Steve, to fix the problem, so the project would be finished on time. We were on a deadline and worked non-stop from 7 a.m. to after 10 p.m. for the first two nights, spending every waking minute together. We'd work at the office and ordered in food for lunch and dinner. I was completely stressed, and I too felt as if I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Thankfully, by 4 p.m. on Wednesday, we fixed the problem. To celebrate, we went out to a nice restaurant to celebrate, and both of us had too much to drink. After we got back to the hotel, one thing led to another and I cheated on my husband. It was a misguided, spontaneous act. Initially, I didn't feel anything negative about it, as I somehow rationalized that we deserved it after working so hard. Bruh. So the following night, Steve and I repeated what we had done the previous night. After we were together Thursday, the sobering reality of what we had done hit me first, then Steve and we quickly came to regret our actions. Steve knew I was happily married, and I knew he was engaged to be married. We decided right there to put this out of our minds. 
as if it never happened. We also were concerned if information of this ever got out inside our company, it would ruin our reputations and potentially put our jobs in jeopardy as we carried out the affair on a company-paid business trip. We parted that night and agreed to not speak or communicate again for any reason, unless it was absolutely necessary. This wouldn't be that difficult, as the project we worked on was a unique situation, and we lived on the opposite sides of the country. So the chances of us ever crossing paths again was low. We ended things that night, and I put it all behind me. Or so I thought. Flying home, I felt fine initially, but then started getting a pit in my stomach when I thought about greeting Winston at the airport. I held it together until I made it to the pickup zone, and I saw him there waiting for me, with a big smile on his face. When I saw him, I just started crying and hugged and kissed him repeatedly, holding on to him for dear life. We were locked in an embrace for so long that an airport police officer came over and tapped on the window, motioning for us to move along to clear the pickup lane. Winston asked me what was wrong, and I told him I had been under such stress and missed him so much that I just broke down when I saw him. He accepted this, and that night we shared a beautiful night in passion. Ever since I got home from that trip, I've been taking extra good care of him. He's enjoying it and deserves all the special attention I'm giving him. But I am dying inside. My mind is being eaten, away with guilt, and it's getting worse by the day. I have trouble sleeping and eating, and as a result, my work is suffering because of it. All I want to do is be near my husband and show him how much I love him. I've even had recurring nightmares of him finding out and leaving me. Last week, we made the decision to try to get pregnant, and that has made me even more emotional about everything. I keep thinking in my head that I don't deserve him or he deserves someone better. I don't think I can survive like this another week. It's eating me up to the point I can't function normally. No one knows about the affair, except for Steve and I, though. This makes my situation even worse, as I have no one to talk to about this. That's why I'm here. I feel my inner conscience is telegraphing to me to be honest and tell Winston what I've done, but I'm so afraid I'll lose him. I know if I tell him, he'll be devastated and wouldn't see me the same way again. However, I do feel he'd eventually forgive me as he loves me so much and is such a kind, caring man by nature. So this brings me to my question. Should I tell my husband about this meaningless affair I had two months ago? Or should I remain silent and just continue to make it up to him in other ways? I'd really like to hear from those of you who've betrayed and how you handled things. Don't hold back, please. I'd like to hear about both the good and bad outcomes. Thank you. Your post brought back a lot of bad memories for me. I was you 31 years ago. That's when I cheated on my then wife of two years. It was just a stupid one night stand and I didn't plan to ever tell her. Since the woman lived on the opposite coast and I'd never see her again. Well, just like you. I was overcome with guilt and I finally broke down and confessed to her. This broke her heart and completely changed how she felt about me. She tried making the marriage work, but she had lost all trust and would never let me touch her again, not even for a hug. She eventually filed for divorce. This set my life into a terrible downward spiral that lasted until four years ago, when I met the woman who would become my fourth wife. For the first time since my first wife divorced me, I can honestly say I'm happy and at peace with myself. If I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't tell my then wife, as she was truly my soulmate. If I didn't tell her, we'd be married today and I'd have a big beautiful family, like she and her husband have now. So my advice to you is don't tell your husband and instead just be the greatest wife in the world to him. Good luck. You should tell him, but be prepared that your relationship will never be the same and may end. I cheated on my husband back in 2002. Like you, it was a stupid fling with a co-worker. My husband stayed with me, but he never fully trusted me again, and our love life was reduced to the occasional physical release for him. 
He stayed just for the kids, as he couldn't stand not seeing them every day. As soon as our youngest graduated high school, he presented me with divorce papers. He explained that he had been miserable for 12 years and that he had no use for me now that our kids were all young adults. I was destroyed by this, as I had put my full heart and soul into the marriage and to satisfying my husband, but it wasn't enough to overcome the pain I caused him. I don't think you have kids together, so your risk of losing him is very high. So again, my advice to you is to tell him, but prepare yourself for the worst. I created this account just to reply to you anonymously. My reply to you is going to be controversial and I'm going to get a lot of hate for it. My recommendation for you is not to tell your husband. Reading your post made me cry as it brought up so many memories. Memories that if ever discovered would end my relationship with my husband and destroy my relationship with my kids. 19 years ago, I cheated on my then fiancé with a neighbour in the building where we lived. This neighbour worked from home and I was laid off at the time. Things just happened between us. The affair went on for nearly three months and we pretty much were together every weekday at his apartment. Eventually, I came to my senses and broke it off with the guy. Four months later, I married my fiancé. Today, we are the happiest couple in the world and have three beautiful children that look and act just like their dad. I, of course, never had any additional contact with the guy, and it just destroys me when I think about what I did and what I potentially jeopardized. I am, however, so thankful. I never confessed. My husband is such a strong and prideful man who would never stand for cheating. Even if he were to find out today what I did all those years ago, he would leave me on the spot with no questions asked. So my advice to you is to not tell him and instead make sure you meet or exceed his every expectation in every way possible, like I've done. It's worked out great for me. Thank you all for your heartfelt replies. I read each and every one of them and really appreciate you sharing your personal stories. After much thought and three sessions of counseling with a great therapist, I've made the decision to tell my husband. It's going to be difficult for me and devastating for him, but I have to do it. To prepare for this, I have written out a full timeline of the affair which wasn't difficult since it was only physical for less than 24 hours and was never emotional. My therapist has also provided me with a number of great articles about how to help your spouse deal with your affair, specifically what not to do. I'm also prepared for him to want to be away from me for a time. From what I've read, this is perfectly natural, though I will be sad if he chooses to do that. As I said, my husband is a loving, caring man. He is very giving and protective, so I don't think he will react that way to this news. Rather, I think he will be hurt and disappointed by what I've done. I'm prepared for just about anything. Wish me luck, Susan. Hi, everyone. It's been a long time since I last posted here. So many of you have been reaching out asking me for an update on my situation. I really appreciate your interest and concern. I wanted to update you before this, but I had so much to deal with and just didn't have the time or energy to do so. Things just started settling down for me recently. So here I am. I'm going to pick things up where I last left off. If you recall, I was about to confess to my husband about the brief affair I had with one of my work colleagues. My plan was to talk to him that Saturday morning, and I ended up doing just that. Though we had plans that afternoon, I specifically made sure we'd both be together that morning, so that I could tell him without interruption. That morning, I was a bundle of nerves and almost backed out of it. Looking back now, I wish I had. I fixed Winston his favorite breakfast, and after we ate, 
I told him about the affair. He just looked at me attentively as I spoke, without saying a word. After I finished, he just stared at me, like he was looking right through me. He then excused himself and went into the office and closed the door. I went over and tried the door handle, but he had locked it. I spoke to him through the door and again told him how sorry I was and how much I loved him. I then told him I'd be waiting in the living room when he's ready to talk. From the articles I read, one of the things it said for a wayward to do is to give the betrayed plenty of space, so that's what I did. After a few minutes, I thought I heard him talking to someone, so I snuck over to the door to see if I could make out what he was saying. I couldn't, so I just went back out to the living room. I then got a call from my mom and I let it go to voicemail, as I didn't have time to speak with her. Then, about 10 minutes later, there was a knock at the door. When I looked out, I saw my parents standing there. I opened the door and was about to ask them to come back later, as Winston and I were having a personal discussion now, when my mom said Winston called and told them everything. I couldn't believe it and didn't know what to say. My dad asked if it was true, and I asked what. My dad asked, Did you have an affair with one of your co-workers? I said yes, and started crying. My mom asked, How could I do such a thing? Before I could answer, Winston came out of the office and started talking to my parents, totally ignoring me and referring to me in the third person. He asked my dad to please take me out of there as he wasn't in a good frame of mind. I kept trying to talk to him, but he kept ignoring me, looking only at them as if I was invisible. Desperate for his attention, I went over and hugged him. While he didn't push me away, he didn't hug me back. After I released him, he went back into the office again and locked the door. My parents started asking me questions about the affair and I got upset and ran into the bedroom. My mom followed me in and we talked for a while, and then she helped me pack a few of my things. Before leaving, I told Winston through the door how much I loved him and that I would stay away until he's ready to talk. I said I was going to my parents' house and would stay there as long as he needed. I didn't hear from him at all for the rest of the day. I tried contacting him multiple times, but he didn't respond. In the last text I sent, I told him I was coming over as I was worried about him. He responded and asked that I please leave him alone. I cried all day and kept asking myself, how could something like this happen? When I got up Sunday morning, my parents were sitting at the table drinking coffee with sad looks on their faces. I thought they were just upset over what I had done, but there was more. My dad said Winston came over sometime earlier that morning I was so excited and asked if they talked to him. Dad said, no, we didn't see him. I then asked how they knew he was there. My dad said, because he left your car in the driveway with all of your belongings in it. I just said, what? And ran out to the driveway where I saw my SUV parked and filled to the max with trash bags. Seeing that, I just broke down and fell to the ground crying. I couldn't believe what was happening. I told my parents I needed to go over to my house to talk to Winston. When I got there, he was home but didn't answer the door. I then tried opening the doors with my keys, but he had the internal deadbolts locked and I couldn't get in. I then thought to open the garage door and get in that way, but when I checked the app I used for that, Winston had removed my rights. I then thought I could enter the garage via the keypad, but he had changed the code, so I was completely shut out of my own house. Since it was early on a Sunday morning and I didn't want to wake the neighbors, I started texting him. At first, I was nice, but he didn't respond. I then sent him a text saying it was my place too, and he can't just lock me out. He texted back, sue me. I couldn't believe the once kind, caring man I loved with all my heart was treating me like this. Yes, I deserved punishment, but not like this. At a minimum, I expected he would be civil and not act like an insane person. Eventually, I went back to my parents' house, 
locked myself in my old room and just cried my heart out for most of the day, totally bewildered by the last 24 hours. I again tried contacting Winston all day, but he didn't respond. On Monday morning, I called my boss and took three days off to deal with the situation. I went over to the house Monday morning and was able to get in. Winston wasn't there, and when I looked in our bedroom, I saw that all of his clothes were gone. I then went into the office, and there I saw something that just destroyed me. It was the cover of our wedding album, sitting beside the shredder. Winston had removed all the pictures and shredded them. I couldn't believe it. As I walked around the house, I noticed all the pictures of us were missing. Searching further, I found all the empty frames and realized he shredded them too. I was so broken, I couldn't believe what was happening. I called Winston's office and talked to the receptionist. I asked if I could speak with him and she told me that he would be out of the office for the rest of the week. She said he had taken the week off. I then called my mother-in-law. She answered and said, Winston told her and my father-in-law everything. I asked if she knew where he was. She said yes, but that she wasn't going to tell me where and hung up on me. I felt deeply hurt by this as I was so close to my in-laws. On the Wednesday that week, I started getting calls from Steve. I ignored all his calls and sent them to voicemail. Later on, when I listened to his messages and he was asking me to please call him ASAP. Finally, in his last message, he said Winston somehow contacted his fiance and told her all about the two of us. Hearing this, I called Steve and he was pissed. He said we promised each other not to tell anyone. I told him I know and that I should have told him before I talked to my husband, but I didn't think he'd react the way he did. Steve then told me he told his fiance, my husband was lying and that nothing happened. He said she was going to call me and that I needed to tell her the same thing. I told him I couldn't do that and he started begging me. I again said I wouldn't lie. Once he heard this, he started berating me, calling me terrible things and wouldn't stop. So I hung up on him and blocked his number. A few minutes later, I got a call from his fiance and I told her everything. She was silent. As I explained what happened and when I finished the story, she just hung up. The nightmare didn't end there though. When I went to back to work the following day, I was called to the HR director's office. She's a friend of mine, so I didn't think anything of it. But when I got there, she had an HR manager with her, along with the director of security. I knew something was up and I was likely in trouble. She asked me to sit down in a formal way and said they had a few questions for me. They said they were contacted by someone who said that Steve and I engaged in an affair while on company time using company resources. My stomach sunk and I started crying, then told them what we had done, but explained nothing happened during work hours. The HR director explained that when our salaried employees travel for business, the entire trip, is considered work time. She went on to explain that the hotel room is considered a company resource since it was paid for by the company. They then went on to ask me about the second night that Steve and I were together. They asked if I ate dinner with Steve that night and I regrettably admitted that I did. They then asked if I drank wine, I said yes. They asked me how much and I said two glasses. They then asked if I purchased the wine and I said no. Steve did. The HR director told me that is against company policy, as employees are not permitted to use another employee's card for food or drinks. In the end, I received a final written warning for the infractions, and Steve was terminated. Before you say I received preferential treatment as a woman, I assure you that I did not. Steve would have gotten the same if that's all he did, but unfortunately for him, he did more. Steve was fired because he extended his stay by one additional day with no business justification, and he expensed the entire thing, including the flight change fee, the hotel, and all of his meals, which included the two bottles of wine. He extended his stay just to sleep with me the following evening. I feel horrible about what happened to Steve. 
He was a great employee with a bright future, but now he's unemployed, and his fiancée left him, all because of me. As for me, any hopes of ever getting a promotion after this is slim. The following Monday at work, Winston had me served with divorce papers at the reception desk. The receptionist called me that I had a delivery up front. When I got up there, a man was waiting for me with a box of flowers. I hoped they were from Winston, and they were. However, after I signed for the package, the gentleman handed me the box of flowers, and then handed me the divorce papers and proclaimed that. Mrs. You have now officially been served with divorce papers. My life shattered right there, and I broke down crying. Again. I had to leave the office and took the rest of the week off. For the next seven months, I tried everything to save my marriage, but Winston refused to even speak to me. In fact, he's never spoken another word to me since I made my confession. Our divorce is now final, but I'm still an emotional mess. I love and miss the kind man he was before my affair, but realize that man no longer exists. My actions have turned him into a cruel monster. I'm still holding out hope that one day he will have a change of heart and we can be a couple again, but that light is fading fast. A friend of mine told me that Winston has been dating one of our former neighbors from the townhome community where we lived. I was casual friends with this woman, and I couldn't believe she'd do this to me. I deserved to suffer for what I did, but I never expected Winston to react the way he did. I knew there was a remote possibility my confession would end our relationship, but I thought the chance of this was one in a million, tops. I want to end this by sending a message to my husband. Babe, if you ever read this, I want you to know I'm truly sorry and will love you forever, Susan. That brings us to the end of Susan's story. Even though Winston treated her well and could be stamped as the traditional nice guy, she didn't respect him enough to stay loyal. I'm curious to what Winston thought. While Susan was showering him with the overload of extra affection after her trip, as this could be seen as a red flag. Nonetheless, did you notice any red flags in her story? If so, what did you notice and how would you act upon them? As these stories are shared for your entertainment, let's not forget that they can also hold lessons, like this one shows that the truth is a precious thing. Thank you for staying till the end. You're the one I make these episodes for. Before you go, secretly switch the like buttons, sleeping pills, for caffeine ones. See you in the next one.